I have moved on to phase two of my minimalism journey. I have spent the past few years decluttering stuff, you know, taking stuff away. But now it's time to add something, a little pizzazz. Let's go. Hi guys, it's Laura and I help you live a simpler, happier, more spacious life. And this is what my office looked like before. So different to how it looks now, but we'll get to that. Ever since I suffered from postnatal depression, I have realized just how important it is for me to have my own space. And I started this decluttering journey, this minimalism journey as a way to reclaim control of my surroundings. But here's the thing, I have always struggled with spaces because they never felt permanent to me. You know, they never felt like my forever home. Like even this is not my forever home. So it's really hard for me to uh, change a space or put work and effort into a space because why bother? Now though, I understand the importance of your environment and how big an impact that has on other things, including your mental health. So phase two of my minimalism journey is all about protecting and maintaining my spaces as a way to protect and maintain my mental health. Though this project did threaten <laughs> my mental well-being, it was very frustrating. But I have curated my stuff and now it's time to create a nicer and environment for it. The only problem, I've never done anything like this before, so there were a few bumps in the road. Now, I first started this project back in May, so you're about to see long-haired Laura, <laughs> but first I had to pick up paint. There are so many options, and you know, not just in terms of color, but type and finish too. I had no notion what I was doing. <laughs> So I had to ask for help, something I hate doing because, you know, independent woman. But I eventually picked up a gallon of white paint for the wall. Honestly, I think the guy was a bit alarmed by how bright <laughs> the white I chose was. But I got the colored samples for the rainbow mural that I wanted to paint. I didn't have any bother choosing colors here because Sam painted a rainbow on Scout's bedroom wall last year. So I just used the exact same colors he did. Uh, very handy. Um, and then I picked up tape, rollers and trays, and a paint. Brush. The first job was to move stuff away from the walls. The bookcase was tricky because it's so heavy. So I took a few things off and then I moved it inch by painful inch. But once it was far enough out, I used the wall for kind of leverage to push it out further. Then I washed the walls just a plain old cloth and some water and I removed the outlet covers. Uh, then, then I basically downed tools <laughs> for several weeks. I think I was expecting the painting part to be just terrible, to be a really awful, horrendous experience. So I, yeah, I put it off for a while. Okay, it is now about three weeks <laughs> later. Life just took over. So today I'm gonna start the painting. I'm going to do uh, this wall here, which is the one that was behind my bookcase and just this little strip here beside the door. So that'll be this bit done. I'm pretty sure that's all I'm going to get done today. I am, have never painted before, so I have no idea what to expect, but I think I'm safe enough saying that this is probably going to take me a lot longer than I, in my head, I think it will. I'm not expecting this to be fun, but I am excited to actually get started, get this underway. Please admire my lovely Dollar General clothes that I bought specifically for painting purposes. <laughs> Honestly, this was an unnecessary purchase because I don't think I got a single drop on me. So you'll see later that I quickly ditched this outfit. But I started with all of the cutting in. Listen, I did not bother taping anything off because the door frames, the ceiling and the baseboards are all white. So it didn't really seem to matter if a little bit, you know, like slopped over. <laughs> um, but I did use a baby wipe for any little drops or spills, which is a trick actually I learned from Rachel over at Banyan Bridges on Instagram. Rachel is a muralist. She's actually the one who inspired me to paint a mural in my own home. And listen, there were several points in this process where I was cursing <laughs> her name. 
but I think it all worked out well in the end. I'm going to leave a link to Rachel's Instagram in the description. Go check her out. She just recently bought a new home and I can't wait to see how she paints it. But yeah, she was the inspiration for this project. But it was so satisfying to cover up all of that old color. It just really felt very muddy. To me, it was, it was kind of like pressure washing, you know, this process. I got to wash away all of the muck and the dirt and just be left with a fresh, clean, bright surface. Once this bit was done, I was simultaneously exhilarated and exhausted. And I basically ended up just staring into the abyss <laughs> for an hour. I was kind of like half celebrating my accomplishment, but the other half of me was not wanting to do anything else. But I sucked it up and I started on the second wall. Now this wall is actually twice the size of the first but thankfully it didn't take me twice as long because I had learned a lot of lessons from that first section. Again I didn't tape anything but I was starting to realize at this point just how yellow the baseboards are so I'll probably end up painting those at some point too but it's a really good example of how kind of blind we become to things over time. We don't notice maybe how dingy and dusty things become because we're so used to them. Um, Decluttering, I guess, kind of forced me to drag things out into the light and to really evaluate them. And now this next phase is also showing me what needs a little extra TLC. And then even though I hoped I'd get away with two, I had to go back and do a third coat. But listen, the painting itself is not nearly as terrible as washing all of the rollers and brushes afterwards. Ugh. <laughs> if you're going to be using some of them again, like I'm pretty soon, and with the same color, just pop them in a Ziploc bag or something, you know, very easy. Then you can just pull them out and reuse them. But unfortunately, I had so many different colors to paint, you know, across the process of this, that this quickly became my least <laughs> favorite part of the whole thing. Overall, it wasn't exactly an enjoyable experience but it wasn't as awful or as slow as I thought it was going to be and it was very satisfying but this was just the white next was the mural and it was about to get a lot more annoying I was dreading all of the taping so much that I actually didn't come back to this until about two weeks later but I measured for where I wanted the rainbow stripe to go but this was a pain because the walls aren't perfect so I was getting different measurements on each side for how far kind of from the ceiling it would be and then plus I'm a perfectionist so I agonized over this for way longer than necessary. I was putting tape on the wall for like where I thought the stripe would go but I eventually just got my arson gear and started taping. This was a hateful process <laughs> but I decided that each stripe would be the same thickness as the tape and that made it a lot easier. It meant I only had to mark off one line and then I just used the tape as a guide thereafter. I was not planning on being on camera today, so in pajamas. Um, I have not touched this in a few weeks and I'm just fed up today. I just want to get at least this bit done. I was going to tape the rest of it off, but I figure, you know what, I'm just gonna dive in paint this bit. I did not have a paintbrush that was small enough for these stripes so that was kind of part of the reason I was putting off putting it off I thought you know oh I'll have to go to Home Depot or whatever but then I remembered my husband sometimes paints like I mean like canvases and stuff like proper paintings <laughs> so I went looking and I found that he has one of these, which is gonna be the perfect size. I'm just gonna dive in and get this done because I am sick of looking at it. I mean, I think the stripes actually look nice, the painter's tape, <laughs> but I am sick of not actually making pro uh, progress on this. So today we paint some stripes. Okay, so conventional wisdom would tell me that I should paint over all of these first with the white that I used on the wall and that way it will seal up the tape. So if anything does bleed, it will be the white the same color as the wall. But number one, I'm just, I just want to dive in and get this done. So I'm just gonna go in with color and then if I need to do touch-ups with a tiny little brush afterwards, I will. But also, I've run out of white paint. So yeah, taping without sealing was a big <laughs> mistake. I had a lot of touch-ups to do afterwards. 
Learned that lesson for the other walls, though. I don't know if it's the paintbrush, if it's the paint, uh, but I, I'm not liking this. It, this seems very watery. Um, it's going on. It's just, no, no, it's not going on well at all. Um, it's not giving, an, it could be the brush. There's just a lot of brush strokes in it, a lot of like white. It just seems like very thin paint. I think I'm gonna have to do a lot a lot of coats and I may end up going out and getting a roller that is small enough because all of these brush strokes I know they're going to annoy me um mm, not a great start but I'm going to persevere I'm sure it'll all come together in the end right Ugh. I have to go wash the brush now it's the worst part about painting <laughs> washing the rollers and brushes Ugh. <laughs> it's now two hours later it's time for a second coat my husband was out running errands so i asked him if he could see if they had a one inch roller this is what he came back with it's like an edging tool it's for corners the dog is playing upstairs um it's for corners and like the edges of where the wall meets the ceiling i don't know if this is going to do the job but i'll give it a go and if not it'll be back to the paintbrush but yeah second coat going on now yeah it was back to the paintbrush but stick around because i got a little crafty in the end i came up with the perfect solution Okay, I've done two coats with a brush now and I'm just not happy. You can still see a lot of brush strokes in it. This paint is just really thin. It's not covering properly, so it's going to need at least one more coat and I'm going to use a roller. This is a three inch roller, so I can't like roll this way. I think I'm gonna roll, try and roll this way, just kind of like in a W pattern. It's probably going to take a little bit longer, but I think this is going to give me better coverage and just lead to an overall better, less frustrating result. But I think this guy is the answer to my painting problems. <laughs> Spoiler alert, he wasn't. <laughs> but please enjoy this out of focus footage of me being frustrated. I'm going to try one more thing as you're about to see before finally getting my crafting cap on. Oh, new day new tool i don't hold out much hope for this one it's one of those like foam spongy things but i'm gonna give it a go the roller is not working for me the paint brushes are not working for me and i did look up online yesterday to see if i could get one inch rollers apparently they do not exist i can get a two inch roller but oh another thing that's annoying me is that i have now done three coats on the red and it still needs at least one more coat. So uh, that's annoying. Anyway, I'm gonna dive in, see how I go. Yeah, I pretty much immediately gave up on that idea and I called on all of my creative juices. I cut the edging tool with a scissor so that the surface was nice and flat. And this trick worked a treat. You can just call me the mural MacGyver. <laughs> So I used that for all of the rest and then came the good part, the peeling. Oh, so satisfying. I didn't record for ages after that because honestly, it was just a hassle getting the camera out every time. And a lot of it was just kind of tedious touch-ups and stuff. But on this wall, I introduced a slight curve to the stripes so that it would go around the bookcase, but it presented problems, let's just say, um, and more tidying up with tiny brushes. But I learned a lot as I went, but I will say that each wall was 
slightly different, so I was constantly facing new challenges. I didn't record myself painting the third wall though because I want that to be a surprise for the end, so stay tuned for the final reveal very soon. We are nearly there now. The final step was to remove all the furniture from the space, like vacuum the carpet and lay down my new rug um, and then drag everything back in. Again, painful process. And then arrange some plants in the space, which honestly took ages. Um, and I'm still not 100% happy with it, but let's be honest, like most of these will be dead <laughs> in a few months anyway. Um, and then I added another little surprise, which again, you will see very soon, plus an extra detail that made a big difference, but I did have to pay someone to do it for me. And this is the final result. Feast your peepers. Let me take you around the space and kind of explain my thinking behind it and show you some of the hidden surprise details. So the whole idea behind the mural was for it to represent the creative journey. Now it didn't start out that way. I was just going to do a stripe, a plain stripe all the way around, but it evolved as I went. So when you start a creative journey, you know, there are plenty of ups and downs and sometimes your vision can be hidden from you just like it was with this project. Then you can have periods where it feels like nothing is happening for the longest time and you feel like you're getting nowhere, like you're just stagnant. But then just as you are about to give up hope, you get a burst of inspiration. So that's the story behind the mural, but let me show you some of the details that you haven't seen or that you haven't got a good look at yet. I tried to bring in a lot of natural elements with the plants. I was kind of trying to create a little oasis for myself. I did contemplate moving my desk, but I really like the natural light that comes in. I will probably replace this window with a regular one just so that I have a better view. But you know, sometimes this is nice because the glass blocks throw rainbows over my desk when the light hits them. So that's fine for now. And you can see that Aurora still has pride of place and she's still trying to take over everything. <laughs> the rug then is basically supposed to represent grass. It is so comfy and cozy. I love it. And fun fact, Jovi <laughs> loves it too. It wasn't actually big enough to fill the entire space, but they had a matching runner. So I got that and added it. You can kind of see the little seam there. I think that will probably become less noticeable over time. More plants here then, but I do have a little visitor hiding behind some of them. I really wanted Jack to become a permanent feature in my office because I love him so much and I think he's probably going to become kind of like an elf on the shelf character where he will move around my office every now and again. And another one of my favorite features of this room that you haven't yet seen is the light fixture. Oh, it's so cute. The previous one was one of those kind of dull yellow ones, really plain. But this one is brighter and bluer, which is exactly what I wanted in this space. It can get quite dark in here. It will also hopefully work better for videos because the previous kind of muddy color gave everything this reddish, brownish, yellowish tinge to it. And I was constantly having to color correct all of my videos and photos and they just never turned out exactly how I wanted them. So hopefully this will fix that. I was going to try replacing the light fixture myself, but I figured, you know, for now at least I should probably stick to things that do not have the potential to kill me. So I hired that one out. The chair is new too. It actually has a massage feature right here in the lumbar part of it. Plus it has heating and cooling functions. So that's fun. I have always maintained that minimalism isn't necessarily about bare walls. It's about creating a space you will love, even if that means lots of color, which obviously it does for me. And this space now sparks a lot more joy for me. Maybe you can relate to this, but it is so hard to decorate when you live with someone who has completely different tastes from you. So it's been really lovely to have this space that is just for me and that I can do pretty much whatever I want with. 
it's my happy place, but I hope I've encouraged you to create the space that you want. I mean, that's why you're on this journey, right? It is to curate and create the life that you truly want to live. That is what I am doing here, and I hope you will follow along as I continue my journey towards that goal. And until next time, grev mile magwev. Agus peki me shifshigalua. Sloan.